Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to install and set up the Azaha emulator on Android. This allows you to emulate 3D games, so it's really cool, really exciting, but this video is for educational purposes only. It does not condone piracy. So first of all, you want to open up Play Store, go to search, type in Azaha, download as a heart emulator i already have it downloaded or you can download the apk directly from their website next you need a good file explorer i recommend ek e ex file manager install this it is free it will allow you to navigate the files and extract games very very simply and very very easily next what you want to do is launch up as a heart you'll go for you know bring you up to the screen click get started he asks for these three permissions so you click notifications allow microphone while using you know allow it and allow camera click next now it's asking you for two folders the user folder and the application folder so for the user folder i like to create a folder here called games which i've already done which you can click create new folder in there i like to have a new folder you can click using this icon up here and i'm going to call this as a ha in within that i like to create another folder called data and click use this folder click ok and now applications this is where your games will sit so i'm going to click applications and you either have one of two choices. You can either create another folder within, let's say, as a hardcore application, or if you know your 3DS ROMs, you might be using them for another emulator, for example. You could create another folder within games, which is what I would recommend doing, called ROMs. Within there, create another one called 3DS. And here we go. Click use this folder, click allow, click next continue and okay so this is a low important message one you need to make sure your games are decrypted two if your game is decrypted and it's a dot 3ds format you will need to rename it to cci if you have a dot cia don't rename that you can actually install that game but you need to make sure it's decrypted we'll get onto that in a moment click don't show again and if i go to options there's a few settings here so install cia file so if you have a game for the cia or updates of dlc feel free to do that and everything else you can pretty much leave the same you can change the theme and color if you would like to you can also change the user and application folder afterwards and you can or now we go to settings general we're going to leave all you know as is you can change the turbo speed limit this is great if you want like speed through the game i'll do 400 and the le speed limit would just set you at 100 so that's the normal pacing for system we can leave as is new 3ds mode make sure that's selected you can change your region you can change the simulated clock as well now we're going to go to camera just make sure you got something selected for like the camera source like the device camera because some games remember do use the camera gamepad if you're using the on-screen controls like i am you don't need to go in gamepad if you're using an external controller like a bluetooth controller you will need to go into the gamepad click it press that button on the controller and that is how you map it and i'll have separate videos covering that feel free to let me know down in the comments which controller you would like me to map up now graphics in here for the graphics api select vulcan that will give you the best performance especially on you know newish and newer devices to enable asynchronous shader compilation this will just compile the shaders uh, you know in the background so you you get less stuttering and for texture filter this will make it look you know sharper i prefer bicubic again you know feel free to add this or you can you know kind of keep it as is and if you are getting you know problems with performance click disable right eye render or leave this you know off but you can click that and you'll get better performance as well apart from that you're all good to go we can leave it click back for layout for the screen orientation you can change what you want i'll leave it as automatic 
landscape landscape screen layout and there is also a portrait screen layout where i'm in do default or original and you know feel free to you know change the screens as well so this is large screen the main screen on the top will become larger you have a small one single screen just the top one you have side by side screens default which is original is top screen on top bottom screen on the bottom and you can do a screen gap as well which is also nice but just bear in mind it will reduce the size of your screens um so if you do want a gap just bear that in mind but it kind of like you can think of it as simulating the hinge and there's some performance you know overlay options that you can put as well honestly leave that as is unless you really you know, want to change them and there's the, you can do a custom layout which is pretty cool but again more advanced settings in audio click audio input device make sure you have auto selected not none i've had some time where it's none for output mode go to stereo and we're pretty much good to run our game now but where are our games we don't have any so let's go ahead and get our game i've already got one downloaded so you open this click allow that's fine click allow and now you want to go to what the house close that go to storage internal storage and i've got a download I've got the game right here. Keep your finger on it so it selects it. Go to more, extract to, okay. You extract the game. It will not take very long at all. And my game is a .3ds formatted game. So I will need to first copy it into that ROM folder, which I'm gonna do now. So you just, again, keep it pressed, click copy, Go back, go to ROMs, oh no, it's in games, ROMs, 3DS, and paste it in here. It doesn't take very long at all because it's not a big file. Right click it, or you know, you know, select it, rename. And again, if your file is decrypted, rename 3DS to CCI, so yeah, CCI format. No spaces at the end, click OK. And now we can close this down, go back to Azaha so if it doesn't appear you can even close the emulator and reopen it we can drag down like so and you'll refresh if you select the game but not press it you get a few options like play there you can open the textures and mods folder so you can add textures and mods you can delete the game you can click this button so you can create a shortcut if it's your favorite game feel free to do that and you can go to cheats and add any cheats as well i'm just going to click it and start playing Okay, so I had a little bit of an issue there. It knocked off my microphone on my phone. So I'm actually recording this separately. So you might, that's why you might notice a little difference. And they just had to relaunch the game as well. So I'm able to just click, you know, just press A. And I'm using my finger for this. I'm not pressing the A button on the uh, controller at the bottom. This will start a new game, press, press A. Yeah, let's go to standard me select. So it's just doing some saving now. So all you have all your you know your extra settings here, you can save states, overlay options, and you can know you can do the hide controller overlay by clicking show controller overlay. And you can toggle controls as well. Uh, you know, change the D slide in, swap the screens, for example. Just gonna have to wait for this to stick in a bit of time. Oh, Bowser's got Peach. So yeah, just one last thing. If we go to the graphic setting, I forgot to show the internal resolution. So we can change this. I would recommend that you leave it on native. Increasing it makes it look better, sharper, but it does have a drop in performance. I'll say try it, get it working. If you're happy with the performance on native with your device, because depending on what device you have, then go back and change the internal resolution. That was one little thing that I missed for us to mention that before we you know, well, continue with the game. Okay, so we can just go into the level now. 
So I'm using the on-screen control. You could obviously be using a, you know, an external game controller. It makes life a lot easier, but it is an extra device that you have to hold. If you have like a controller that will attach to your phone or your tablet, that is a lot better. So you can see, you know, it's running well. You know, it's good performance. And we're getting, you know, we're getting proper shadows because when I was testing Panda 3DS and I actually created a video of that, setting that up on Mac, again, that's making a lot of progress, but as a whole, you know, it's great. Good performance. You have all the shadows working as well. So let me show you save state. So if you save a game, this allows you to, you know, close the game. I'll go back. I'm going to load that same state again. It will take me to exactly where I save the game. It can be in any point of the game. It can be a loading screen, it can be a main menu, it can be partway through a level. Just one thing to, to note, do not use this as an alternative long-term for in-game saving. The reason being, these can get corrupt, they can, they have incompatibility issues, save saves do between different versions of an emulator, and that's just across all emulators. So if you're the type of person that will play it, probably come back six months, update the emulator, there's a good chance your save states will be broken. So always rely on in-game saving and save states should be used as more of a long-term, uh, you know, I mean, short-term process. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be informed on the next video. Take care. See you soon. Bye.